Today we are going to talk about the relationship between arcs and central angles. Now a central angle is just an angle that has the vertex at the center. So all of these angles are central angles because the vertex of each angle is at the center of the circle. So congruent angles are angles that have the same measure. All right, so let's say that this is uh, 40 degrees and this is 40 degrees. So those are going to be congruent angles. All right, so just write that down, angles with the same measure. Of course, you know what a right angle is, and we'll put a little box right here, and that just means that the angle is 90 degrees. So keep that in mind. Don't forget what a linear pair is. Um, notice that we have a straight line happening right here. So the, these two angles that are side by side form a linear pair. Um, so this yellow angle right here and this blue angle are a linear pair. Together they form 180 degrees. Alright, so these are adjacent angles Um, that add up to 180 degrees. All right, adjacent just means that they're side by side. Um, now, you cannot call this a linear pair because there are three angles here. However, you could probably guess that these uh, these three angles still add up to 180 degrees. So that's still something that you need to keep in mind even though there are three of them. Okay? So these will add up to 180 degrees because together they make up half of a circle. So whenever you see a straight line like this, think, oh, those angles will all add up to 180 degrees. Now, I mentioned this earlier, um, but the central angle is any angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So this angle that I'm drawing right now is a central angle. And uh, we could talk about the measure of that angle. And I might say, for example, oh, this angle right here, this is 60 degrees. Now, um, what about the measure of an arc? Let me change colors for a second. So here's the center of a circle. All right, so here is another central angle. Now, if this angle has a measure of 60 degrees, then the arc, what they call the intercepted arc, has the same measure. So we could say that this arc is a 60 degree arc because the angle is a 60 degree angle. All right, keep that all in mind as we answer these questions. So based on the two little pieces of information that they gave me, we should be able to answer each one of these questions. So, uh, the measure of arc KL. So, Arc KL is right here, um, from K to L the short way. Whenever it's two letters, we automatically know it will be the short way, not the long way around, the minor arc. Anyway, what's the measure? Um, the measure is going to be 60 
degrees because the measure of an arc is the same as the measure of the central angle. So since the angle is 60 degrees, the arc is 60 degrees. All right, um, what about arc MN? Arc MN is right here. And that is going to be 55 degrees for the same exact reason. The arc measure is the same as the measure of the central angle. So this is going to be 55 degrees. All right, what about the measure of arc L, N, K? Okay, so L, N, K. Uh, all right, I'm going to erase this for a minute because it's kind of in my way. Uh, I think I'll use highlighter for this. So I'm going to start at L. I have to pass through N on my way to K. So this major arc is the arc L N K. How big is this arc? Well, notice that this is almost a whole circle. How much is missing? Well, you can see that this missing piece right here is 60 degrees. Since the entire circle is 360 degrees, then if I take away the 60 that's missing, that should leave me with the major arc um, LNK. So obviously 360 minus 60 is just 300. So that is the measure of arc L and K. All right, I think I'm gonna have to erase that and start over again for problem number four. What about arc M, K, N? Okay, M. All right, so here comes another major arc and I think I'm gonna Erase this to kind of start fresh. All right, here we go. M, K, N would go like this. Starts at M, passes through K, and goes to N. All right, so this is very similar to problem number four. Again, this is almost a whole circle the only piece missing is this piece right here. And this, of course, is 55 degrees. So I'm going to do 360 minus 55, and that should give me what I'm looking for, arc MKN. Uh, so that's going to be 305 degrees. OK. Let me start fresh. Problem number five, arc N, J, K. So there's N, there's J, there's K. So here is arc N, J, K. Well, hopefully you can see right away um, that segment N, K is a diameter of the circle. So this is a semicircle, so of course that's 180 degrees. Easy peasy. Okay, what about, uh, well let me erase and start over. What about arc JML? Okay, J. M, L. Okay, that's really the same concept that we just did. Again, if I notice that segment JL is a diameter of the circle, then that makes this a semicircle. So again, I know that this will be 180 degrees. <clears throat> okay. Back up to number seven.
For number seven, we want the measure of angle JQN. So I'm going to trace from J to Q to N. That's what we are looking for. Hmm. Now, look at the angle that's right across from this angle. Look at angle KQL. See how together it forms an X? Um, that means that these are vertical angles. All right, so, and we learned long ago that vertical angles are equal. So if this is 60 degrees, then this will also be 60 degrees. Okay, how about angle MQL? MQL. All right, so I don't need any of this right now. Okay, so MQL is this angle right here. Now, notice something. All right, we've got the diameter right here. That means we've got a semicircle going on right here. All right, so these three angles all together have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I subtract these two angles from 180, that should give me the missing piece. So I need to do 180 minus 60 minus 55. And that will give me the leftover angle. So let's see, that's 180 minus 60 minus 55. Notice how I don't have to add them up first and then subtract from 180. This is the quickest way to do it. So that is 65. Okay, so the missing angle right here is 65 degrees. Okay, um, what about angle JN? So as I go after angle, um, sorry, this is arc JN. Okay, um, I think I will just start fresh for arc JN because I won't need this. So here's arc JN right here. That's what I need to find. Well, remember that um, we had the vertical angles a minute ago, right? We already discussed this. The X right here gives you vertical angles and vertical angles are equal. So remember that this was 60. And then remember that the arc measure is the same as the central angle. So that means this arc must be 60 degrees. Okay, time for arc ML. Arc ML is right here. And um, look, a minute ago, we found this angle right here, didn't we? Um, that was angle MQL, and we found that that was 65 degrees. And the arc is the same as the central angle, so that means that this arc is also uh, having a measure of 65 degrees. So this will be 65 degrees. Okay, next is arc JM. All right, so arc JM is right here from J to M. So one way to do this is to once again remember our vertical angles. So with that in mind, we know that this angle will be 60. 
So that allows us to tell what this angle right here will be uh, by adding these two together. So this is going to be um, 115. Degrees. All right, sixty plus fifty five. And the central angle will have the same measure as the arc. So that means that this arc is one hundred and fifteen degrees. Okay, and finally, there is arc LN. Okay, so arc LN will go the short way from L to N, minor arc from L to N. All right, so this is gonna be the same deal as a moment ago. Um, back on problem number eight, we found that this angle right here was 65. And we already discussed the fact that, uh, well actually I guess last time it was 60 plus 55. Now it's 65 plus 55. So this will be 120 degrees. Right? And again, I'm just doing And uh, the central angle will be the same measure as the arc. So that means that the arc is also 120 degrees.